Hello everybody. In your preclinical conservative exam, you are expected to make a class 2 on a diphodont, which is then followed by a viva. I have prepared this video on popular demand for those students who are appearing in their preclinical exams to help them get ready for it. So let's go ahead and watch. The first step in this exam is to prepare a class 2 cavity. Now how to prepare that cavity? Well, you can master it by watching my video on class 2 cavity preparation in which I have explained in a stepwise manner on the cavity preparation on a typhodont. That will be a great help to all of you. After you've mastered your cavity preparation on a typhodont, let's come down to the viva questions that are asked. The most popularly asked questions are the dimensions of a class 2 cavity preparation that you've made that day. Now the first one is the occlusal cavity width. The occlusal width is one fourth intercuspal distance. It is measured from the center of cusp of one side to the center of cusp of the other side. Now, when we cut the cavity, how much does it come out in dimensions? That is 1.5 millimeter in the central groove area and about one millimeter in the buccal and the lingual grooves. Now, this will be the answer that you will give if you are asked the occlusal width of the cavity. Another case, another popular question is that supposing that there are two occlusal cavities on a tooth, what should be the minimum sound tooth structure present between them? The answer is greater than 0.5 mm. This distance should be greater than 0.5 mm. In case it is less than 0.5 mm, then you join these two cavities and you make a single cavity preparation. Now in the next slide, we will discuss the depth of the cavity. The depth of the occlusal cavity is, your answer should be 0.2 to 0.8 mm below the dentino enamel junction. This is the dentino enamel junction, so the depth is 0.2 to 0.8 mm below the dentino enamel junction. Now when we include the enamel from the occlusal surface, this depth turns out to be 1.5 millimeter. Fine, you've understood. So your answer will be 0.2 to 0.8 mm below the DEJ and from the occlusal surface it is 1.5 millimeter. If you are asked proximal cavity width, your answer will be that the facial and the lingual proximal margins, which are these, this is the facial and the lingual proximal margins, they extend beyond the contact area into their respective embrasures. The occlusal gingival depth, which is this, is 0.5 millimeter below the contact area and this makes the gingival seat give have a clearance of 0.5 millimeter from the adjacent tooth. Now coming to the axial depth if you look at the next photograph the axial depth is 0.2 to 0.8 millimeter beyond the dentine that is here and this measures to be 0.8 to 0.1 uh, 0.8 to 1 millimeter from the external tooth surface. So I hope you followed all these dimensions. Another popular question that is asked is, why is the gingival margin beveled? Now you must understand, this is your class 2 cavity preparation. This is the gingival seat area. Now in this area, you will see that the enamel rods, they are apically oriented. That means they are directed downwards. And these rods, they are unsupported. So your answer will be that the gingival seat is beveled by 15 to 20 degree to remove unsupported enamels due to apical orientation of the enamel rods. This is done so that the enamel does not fracture under occlusal loading. Followed? This will be your answer. Now the next question is why is the axiopalpal line angle rounded? Now you must understand this is your pulpal floor. This is the axial wall and at this junction we have axiopalpal line angle. So your answer will be that the axiopalpal line angle is rounded to reduce stress concentration in this area. Also to increase the bulk of amalgam in this area so that it does not fracture under occlusal loading. Have you followed it? Another question is what is cover surface margin and why do we need to finish it? Well, for the first part, the cavus surface margin is the margin present at the junction of the prepared tooth surface. This is the prepared tooth surface and the external tooth surface. So this is your cavus surface margin. Fine. Why do we need to finish it? We need to finish it for three reasons. First is you have to give three points in that answer. First, to attain a smooth marginal junction. Secondly, to have a continuous seal, marginal seal between the tooth and the restorative material. Third, to develop maximum marginal strength of both tooth and the restorative material. 
The next question asked is related to it. What is cabo surface angle for amalgam restorations? Your answer is the cabo surface angle is 90 degree or it is also called as butt joint. The reason for this is that this particular angle or butt joint is given to produce maximum strength for both amalgam and the tooth. This is because amalgam has low edge strength and is likely to fracture for an angle less than 90 to 80 degree. Have you followed it? So, because of the low edge strength of amalgam, we need to give 90 degree butt joint. Till now, we talked about questions which were specific to class 2 cavity preparation. Now, let us talk about some general questions. What is backward, forward and residual caries? A very popularly asked question. Then what is pit and fissure, smooth surface and root caries? The difference between acute and chronic caries. Difference between primary and secondary caries. What is rampant caries and nursing bottle caries? What is simple compound and complex cavity preparation? What is GV black classification of caries? Now, all these are very commonly asked questions which you should be knowing about. Well, the answer to all the above questions have been discussed in two of my videos on different caries classifications. You can check out those videos and you'll get all your answers there. Next question that can be asked are the steps in cavity preparation and the definition of each and every step. Now, we know that there are two cavity preparation stages, initial tooth preparation stage and final tooth preparation stage. Under these two stages, there are nine steps. Now, you should be knowing all these nine steps in order and the definition of each and every step. The next question, what are line angles and point angles in a cavity preparation? Now, the line angle is defined as an angle formed between the adjoining cavity walls along a line. For example, mesiobuccal line angle. Now, I've made a rough diagram. If you have a look at it, you will see this in yellow. It is one cavity wall and this in gray is another cavity wall. Now, this line, this red line is the line angle. Fine. Similarly, point angle is defined as an angle formed at the junction of three adjoining cavity walls along a point. Now here in the diagram, this is one cavity wall in yellow, gray another cavity wall and in white the third cavity wall. So this is the point angle at the junction of three adjoining walls. The next question, tell the number of line angles and point angles in different cavity preparations. In class 1, there are 8 line angles and 4 point angles. Class 2, 11 line angles, 6 point angles. Class 3, 6 line angles, 3 point angles. Class 4, 11 line angles, 6 point angles. And class 5, 8 line angles and 4 point angles. Now you should be doing this by heart. Let's discuss this question. The difference between the shape of class 1 cavity of maxillary and mandibular molar and why? Now in maxillary first molar, there is presence of oblique ridge running from mesiolingual cusp to distobuccal cusp. If you look at the diagram A, you will observe in the first maxillary molar, this is the mesiolingual cusp and this is the distobuccal cusp and we have an oblique ridge running like this. So let's look at the answer. In order to preserve this ridge, two cavities are made on the occlusal surface, C-shaped on the mesial side and comma-shaped on the distal side. This is C-shaped cavity and this is comma-shaped. Here I have extended it further, giving it a lingual extension. Now, whereas in mandibular first molar, there are five cusps with one central groove, buccal groove and lingual groove. The shape of the outline form follows the course of these grooves. Now, this is it. We have a shape of an outline form following the course of central groove, buccal groove and lingual groove. Sometimes students call it a plus shaped cavity. What is infected and affected dentine? Now, the first photograph, this one is of infected dentine. It is soft, mushy, in consistency and can be easily removed and it has high bacterial content. And this is affected dentine. It is hard, dark in color, difficult to remove and it does not contain bacteria. Now, I have discussed the differences in the next slides. These differences are very important. The first one is based on the location. Now, infected dentine, it forms the outer layer of the involved dentine. It affected, it forms the inner layer of the involved dentine. Color, it is whitish yellow in color. It is dark brown in color. Texture, it is soft machine consistency in which the explorer tip can be easily passed through. It is hard, leathery in consistency. Composition, infected dentine is composed of demineralized and partially mineralized dentine with irreversibly denatured collagen fibers. 
whereas it is composed of demineralized dentine with reversibly denatured collagen it can be reversed now bacteria are present here and bacteria are not present and the phage it is not remineralizable it is removed whereas affected dentine can be remineralized and it is preserved what is enameloplasty now enameloplasty can be defined as a procedure of reshaping the enamel defects that do not extend to more than one third to one fourth the thickness of enamel now this procedure it involves grinding away of the defect to form it to make them saucer shaped so that they can be easily cleaned on their own they become self cleansable well in the spotters you can be asked to identify various hand instruments i have done a video on operative hand instruments in which i have identified the various instruments discussed their function and their manner of use also i have given special emphasis to gingival marginal tremor which is a very popular type of question that is asked the timings i have given on that video for gmt you can be asked to identify the mesial and distal gmt how to use it and the right and the left side so all this you should be knowing do check out this video you can be asked to explain the hand instrument formula now you know there are two types of instrument formula three number and four number you have to know the significance of each and every number in the formula then you may be given an instrument and asked to hold it in different pen grasps like modified pen grasp pen grasp or palm and thumb grasp then also you should be knowing about the pebbles on the instrument and the significance of those now all these questions i have discussed in my video on instrument formula grasps and bevels do check it out and you'll be your questions would be answered there well if you've gone sincerely through this video believe me you'll be able to answer your questions very well if you've enjoyed this lecture do like it share it with your friends and if you've come to this channel for the first time do subscribe to it thank you so much